it is my hope that you are doing well. We have been going through this topic of variation. Now, uh, so far we have looked at two types of variation, that is direct and inverse. We still have two more types to go. And today I want us to look at joint variation. From the name of this type of variation, that is joint, uh, it is a combination of both direct and inverse. When you are looking at direct variation and also at inverse variation, you only had two variables, A, B, P and Q, Y and X, and even from the assignments you did, you realized that. But now, when we come to joint, we will have more than two variables. So we can have P varying with R and also with Q. So that is why we call it joint. It also combines both direct and inverse. And a very good example of this type of variation is the, the, the formula for getting the volume of a cylinder. I don't know whether you remember that formula. V is equals to pi r squared h. Pi in this case is a constant. You know, I told you you can use anything for, for constant, any symbol. So here we can simply say that the volume of a cylinder V varies as the square of R, that is the radius, and also the height. So we can say, we can write V varies as the square of R and as H. The moment we put the word varies here and we have not put the word inverse, then it means direct. So if the word inverse does not appear, then the type of variation is direct. Please note that. For it to be inverse variation, the word inverse must be there. That is why you see that these two are not in the denominator. They are not in the reciprocal. Because you remember, for inverse, we were taking the variable in the denominator. But now, they are just in the numerator. Meaning, they are varying directly. So, here, if I was to rewrite this, I would write the equation as V varies directly. Because I don't have the word inverse. As the square of R and H together. So there's a multiplication sign because of this word here, and. So I, if I remove the proportionality sign and introduce equal sign, then I'll have V is equals to K R squared H. So in this case, you can be given more information where you, whereby you'll be able to get the constant K. Uh, but before we do that, I would like you to do more examples on how to first of all form this kind of an equation from the statement given. For example, if you are told that a quantity P varies as Q and inversely, as square root of r. So you can see in the first instance it varies as q. So this is direct variation. It is varying directly as q. But inversely as a square root of r. So r, r square root must be in the denominator because of the word inverse. So we are going to write that as P varies directly as Q and inversely as a square of R. So when you remove this proportionality sign, introduce the equal to sign, you will have P is equals to K Q over the square root of R. That will be the equation. So given more information about P, Q and R, you can be able to get uh, 
the constant of proportionality k and you can by solving you can be able to get uh, the, 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 the equation relating P, Q, and R. And with that equation, you can answer any other question that you have been given. But before then, you can also be told that these quantities are changing in their percentages. And uh, I will be giving you a question which is uh, similar to that one. Maybe you can be told that P increases by a certain percentage. Q increases by a certain percentage, and then you are asked the percentage change in R. I want to give you that as an assignment, and uh, I'll give you a question in our, in our next forum where you're going to look at uh, such kind of a change, and then you will be able to learn how to do it. First of all, on your own, and then we will do it as an assignment in the next, uh, in the next case. I want us to do one more example here. You are told that a quantity W varies as the square of R and inversely as the square root of x and you are asked to find the top that uh, when when r is 2 x is 16 and w is 2 so you are asked to find um, W when R is four and X is nine. So in this case, you must first of all form an equation. So W varies directly. First of all, this one means direct as a square of R and inversely as the square root of x. So I remove this sign, I put equals, so I get k as the constant of proportionality. You don't have to use k, I'm just used to it, you don't have to use it. So that will be the equation, but we have not finished, we have not gotten k. So we use the information given, you are told that when w is 2, um, r is also 2, so k times 4 r squared, over the square root of x, which is also 4. So this one cancels, and you get k is 2. So my equation becomes um, w is equals to 2 r squared over the square root of x as the equation. And now you have been asked to find uh, w when r is 4. So W is equals to 2 times 4 squared, which is 16, and X is 9, so the square root of 9, which is 3. So I have 2 times 16 over 3. So there I will get 32 over 3, which is uh, actually the answer is 10 and 2 over 3. So that will be our W now, 10 and 2 over 3. You don't have, you, you cannot leave a, a, an answer as a final answer in improper form. So that is what that, that is what you get, W is 10 and 2 over 3. Uh, you can see that we have combined both joint and inverse in this kind of a question. You can also have a question that is combining both direct and direct. And you can also have even other questions that only have inverse. There's no direct. So whichever question is given in joint variation, that's how you move about it. You combine both joint, uh, I mean you combine both direct and inverse. And then you work it out normally, just the way we were working out uh, the other questions. So uh, I would like you to go and train yourself how to do the percentage changes, as I have told you. For example, here you can be told that uh, Q increases 
by less than ten percent, and R decreases by five percent, and so you are told to find the change, the percentage change in P. I would like you to go and do that one on your own. Then uh, we will look at several examples later on about the same. So thank you very much. I will be giving you an assignment in the other area. Uh, have a nice day.